Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cross Connect. We are so thankful that all of you are here with us today, whether you're worshiping with us in-house or you are with us at home or at the beach or on the other side of the world, wherever you may be, we are grateful to have you all in worship. Today, we are celebrating our women in ministry here at Trinity and also women in ministry around the world through the United Methodist Church. And so it's going to be a special day of celebration, a special day of worship. We have a, a wonderful guest preacher who will be with us um, today, and we're going to introduce her later on. But again, I hope that you are prepared for a wonderful day of God's presence, God's movement, and God's call upon our life. Um, those of you who have been with us over the last couple of weeks know that we are studying through the book of Proverbs right now. And we've been doing that through sermons, and we are also doing it through daily devotions that are available through a podcast as well as a daily email. Um, and today, for those who are in-house, we have little cards that uh, give you some Proverbs scriptures that go along with the sermon today. And so we hope that you'll pick those up if you haven't already. And for those who are worshiping online, we will make sure that these get emailed to your inbox. Um, it'll just help you as you continue to connect with the message today throughout the rest of the week. But again, we are so glad that y'all are here. We hope that you'll take a minute to connect with us. You can do that with the card that you uh, were given when you came in. There's a QR code that you can use your phone, photo app on your phone to do that. Or for those worshiping at home, there's a little blue button um, that you can let us know that you're here. You can share your prayer concerns there. If you have something that you want to celebrate, please let us know. If you need to update information, you can do all the things there. Um, but most of all, we just want to know that you're here. We want to connect with you as we continue to do life together here at Cross Connect. Another way that we connect is through our giving. Now, you know, uh, we don't have plates or baskets that we pass around. We have them set up at the back in the middle area so that you can drop them in as the ancient method was or drop them on your way out. There's another way to do it. It's text to give. It's on the screen there. Set it up through your cell phone. Also, you can mail them into the church office and through our website to give back in joy here at Trinity. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in a couple of weeks... September the 11th, it's going to be a big day here at Trinity. Um, that is when all of our fall discipleship opportunities will kick off. And we have for adult, youth, kids, everybody. For our adults, we have kind of two different things that are going on. Some are resource-based. They're books that you can see on the screens right now. Um, we're excited to be able to offer a variety of of topics as well as a variety of kind of depths. Some of them are short-term and really kind of entry-level, easy kind of connections. Some of them are longer-term, like Disciple, where you can do a deep dive into studying the Bible. So there's a variety of options there, and we hope that you'll take an opportunity at trinityhsv.org slash events to check all of those out. Um, but we are also going to have something new, a type of small group that we've never had before, and we're calling them table groups. And those will be um, more relationally driven, uh, where you're really getting to know and building community with the people in your group. And so uh, we are excited to offer both of these, and we hope and pray that everyone, whether you've been part of a small group or not, that you will prayerfully consider connecting to one of these groups, because um, they're great opportunities to get to know God better and also to get to know your Trinity community better. So y'all check those out. Also for our youth, we'll be kicking off Converge um, with a new series there. So um, we are excited about that. And then our kids um, team, which is all of our um, exploration in arts and music. There's going to be pottery and dancing and all kinds of great things. And so that will start as well as Fate Finders for our kids, um, where they will be uh, learning about their relationship with God and Bible study. And so um, all of this, again, is available at trinityhsv.org slash events where you can register for that and we can make sure that we have all the supplies that you need and we can grow in faith together this fall. And that's kicking off September 11th, but next week is the first Sunday of the month already. My gosh, here we are. And it is, for, don't forget, food for thought. You can drop it here in the lobby in the bins or under the blue awning from uh, 1 to 3. And you see the items there, cereal, canned spaghetti, soup, instant potatoes, other things you can drop in that bin. There's a blue one, there's a green one, and I think a red one. A red one, yeah, we've got all well. the colors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but they're everywhere. So y'all y'all be sure to do that, and we make sure those are connected to local food pantries. The last thing that I want to do today is we... Um, kick off this Women in Ministry uh, Sunday is to, lady, 
please, I want y'all to put October 22nd on your calendar, okay? October 22nd, um, we are going to gather here in this room for a women's conference. Uh, the focus of this is going to be renewal. And when you hear that word, doesn't that just sound like what your soul needs right now? Uh, we're going to have some special speakers who come. We're going to have some table group opportunities. We're going to laugh together, probably maybe cry together a little bit too. Um, but we're going to have a wonderful day of fellowship, of worship, of um, growing spiritually and being renewed in our soul. And so we hope that you will plan to join us for that. More details and registration stuff will come out later. But we wanted you to go ahead and get that on your calendar, okay? So at this time, I'm going to invite Kay West to come forward, and she is going to kick off our United Methodist Women and something else kind of Sunday, okay? It's a great day. Yeah. Yeah, so y'all welcome Kay. I am Kay West, which I'm sure 99% of you already know since I've been here since the doors opened. But anyway, I'm glad to be here today, and I do have the honor of being the president of the unit of United Women in Faith here at Trinity. I love this group. I've been with them for many, many, many years, and I plan to stay with them until the good Lord decides I need to leave. When he makes that decision, then I'll tell everybody bye. I know that you are wondering about the name change, United Women in Faith. This was done by the general office in New York. They sent out questionnaires to over 20,000 women. They weren't necessarily Methodists. They were Baptists, Catholics, non-denominational women that didn't go anywhere to church. Asking about a name because they had heard that there were women interested in the work that we do with women, youth, and children. The name from these people came back, United Women in Faith because they did not feel comfortable coming to our groups with the word Methodist in it. So this is why we have gone to United Women in Faith. And for a lot of us, we'll still be United Methodist Women, but we are United Women in Faith with everyone. I want all the United Women in Faith that are here to please stand. Thank you. It's great to see all of you, and I do appreciate all of you coming this morning. I'm going to ask our guest speaker to come join me, and while she's walking up here, we also have the honor of having her husband, Reverend Dr. Tawari Tumarifi, and their son, Tende. Will you two please stand? Thank you, and believe me, it was difficult for me to be, say, Reverend Dr. Tewery, because I call him TK. <laughs> it is my privilege to introduce to you Reverend Dr. Adeline Kumarifi, who is our speaker this morning. She is a very busy lady on the conference level, as well as working with her husband at St. Paul Triana. But she was gracious enough to take today to come be our speaker for United Women in Faith Sunday. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Miss Kay. It is an honor. Well, let's continue in worship this morning. If you'll stand up and pass the peace of Christ to those around you, you can high five, you can wave, you can fist bump, you can let somebody know that they are glad, you're glad they're, they're in worship today. Text somebody at home. Sing together. Wonderful counselor, the mighty God. You have come. You have come. You have come. You have come. The everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
Taking all I have and now I'm laying at your feet You'll have every failure, God You'll have every victory Amen. All right. Can everybody have a seat for a bit? We're going to continue to celebrate what God says and what we believe. And at this time, I want to invite the Hassong family to come forward. I don't know if y'all have had the opportunity yet to meet this amazing family. Austin, Claire, Amelia, and Lark have been worshiping with us for over a year now. Um, and they are just the most amazing family and if you haven't, again, had the chance to get to know them, please make sure that you do today and in the days to come. Um, but God has uh, been working in their life and brought them to the Huntsville area. And they have now um, expressed the desire to be part of our Trinity family. And today we are excited to welcome you and your family into membership here at our Trinity family. And so um, through this process, I've got two questions to ask of you and then a question to ask of you. Because um, when we join a church, when we join what God is doing through a particular congregation, it's, it's a shared relationship. Uh, we, we walk through all of these things together. And we talk about it Cross Connect all the time, how um, we are called to do life together. And we walk with one another through our own journeys as we grow in faith. Um, we are going to be called today to go out and service, and, and we do all of those things together. That is one of the gifts that God gives us is the strength of community. And so we are so excited to welcome you and, and to have you be a part of our family. Um, and we're also excited to have your gifts and your call because, again, these are some amazing folks right here. And so we, are, we welcome you all. And so the questions, two questions that I have for you all today is you're already part of God's universal church, uh, you know, God at work through God's people all throughout. Uh, but will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And if so, say I will. And as members of this congregation here at Trinity, will you faithfully participate in our ministries by offering your prayers, your presence, being here, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say I will. Amen. Amen. All right, so congregation. Uh, this household of God, I commend this family, these persons, uh, to your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And will you please join together in this welcome and pledge uh, as we celebrate this membership together. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you, in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's welcome our new family. And after work.
worship, if y'all want to give them the extra layer of Trinity welcome, I invite you to do so out in the lobby, okay? Again, we welcome y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, All right, at this time, I want to invite any of our kiddos who want to go to Kids Connect. Miss Amy is in the back, and she will be happy to take y'all back there to the garden to do a fun lesson. All right, great. And again, um, Kay has already introduced um, Reverend Dr. Adeline Kufaramai today, but I will tell y'all, she is an amazing woman, a woman of faith, a woman of compassion, a woman of ministry, a woman of service. Um, we talked about it this morning. We've known each other for at least 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but she has done so many, um, so many amazing things for God. And today is just going to add to the list. So we are excited to hear God's message through her today and to worship with her today. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, church. It is an honor to be here this morning. I'm thankful to Reverend Mitchell, Reverend Kerry, and to my uh, Miss K over here. You know, Miss K, when she asks you to do something, you know, you have no option most of the time but to do it. <laughs> so I'm thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning to worship with you, uh, to do God's work. Let us pray. God, we come before you this morning. We thank you for this new breath of life today. We are thankful that we are still in the land land of the living. We thank you, dear God, for this day that you have given us, a day that we have never seen before and a day we'll never see again. Therefore, we give you praise, we give you honor, because we know it is through your mess and grace that we are here. God, as we prepare our hearts, our minds to hear from above, May you continue to remind us to tune our ears to you, to hear a word that comes from above. God, we pray for those around the world who are worshiping you at this moment. We pray for the sick. We pray for the shut-in. We pray for those who are breathing the loss of their loved one. May you continue to remind us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 19. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And also a second reading comes from John 3, verses 16 through 17. Luke 4, verses 18 through 19 reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. John 3, 16 through 17. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of God for the people of God. I am so thankful. I want to share something. As we celebrate the work of the United Methodist women, uh, women in faith, I, I, I told Miss Kay, just forgive me, I'm still stuck to, in the United Methodist women. But as I look back in my background from uh, Zimbabwe, where I grew up, where I came from, the United Methodist women was a powerful, powerful group that has made my, my spiritual journey uh, the foundation of who I am and the pillar of my faith. And when we were young as youth members in the UMYF, we always look up to the pioneers, the great gurus of the United Methodist women, the women who will pray for things to happen, for healing to happen. And all of us, we always, as young people, we always wanted to be part of that group of women. Uh, The process for you to be even in that group of women It's not easy, but as youth, we always wanted because we thought 
life had been breathed in us, we wanted to be like them. So I, I, when I came over in America 22 years ago, I was a United Methodist wom uh, woman member, and I still had my, my dress. Now it's kind of faded out, the blue is fading. But I still had my dress, and I've shared, I don't know if I still fit it, because I was skinny, skinny, <laughs> when I came to the States. But this dress is a special dress that long, long time ago, these women prayed, and they, they believed the power of the Holy Spirit shared with them uh, to come up with this uh, dress. And it has meaning to it. So as you look at it, the blue part of it uh, shows the sin, the darkness that clings on us on a daily basis. But we thank God Jesus came so that he can cleanse us through his blood on the cross, which is the red uh, piece of the, the cloth, so that we can be as white as snow. There's a head wrapper, I think when the, 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 the slides were over there, there's a, a white wrapper that represents uh, the, the, the cleaning of the sin. And also on it, it has a tie around it, and it has five buttons, uh, four on the, un on the dress and one on the, on the belt, which represents the wounds on the cross when Jesus was nailed on the cross. So this for us was very special. So I wanted to share with you why I always love the United Methodist women. When I came to this country, that was my to-go area. I worked with them for a long, long time. At some point, I was dean of uh, uh, the uh, Mission U dean. So that has been my background. That's why I love the work of the United Methodist. This brings us to the same on title this morning, life-giving mission, life-giving mission. Because of their mission work, because of their work, life was breathing in me. I see who I am today because there were those who were praying for me. There were those who were taking me to revivals. There were those who stand with me when life was not easy. Therefore, I give praise and honor to the uh, United Methodist women. As we come to this uh, service this morning, when we look in the chapter 4 of Luke in the beginning, when Jesus was set to begin his ministry, he was taken by the Spirit into the desert where he spent days, 40 days in there, praying, fasting, and asking guidance and wisdom for God to this mission that was set before him. He knew the mission was not going to be easy. Therefore, he was in the wilderness for 40 days. And we know what happened in there when the devil was messing with him, telling him all these other tricks. But Jesus knew the mission, why he was sent to this world, to redeem us, to reclaim us, to be the beloved ones of God. My dear brothers and sisters, and in the reading this morning, we hear Jesus is reading from the uh, uh, book uh, of Isaiah where he's talking about the mission that's before him, being sent to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. What does that mean to bring good news to the poor? Uh, we always think of the poor in terms of material things. But this morning, I want to focus us on the poverty spiritually. How we can be poor in spirit. You know, we have all these other things that we, we surround ourselves with, material things. All these things that we gather every day. But we can be here spiritually poor spiritually undernourished because we are not soaking ourselves in the word of God on a daily basis. We are not taking time to just search ourselves and hear what God wants us to do. We are on a mission, an assignment. All of us, we are given a mission from above. Even though Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, he knew the mission that he was sent forth by God to preach good news to the poor. My dear brothers and sisters, are you ready? Or have you been doing God's mission by preaching good news to the poor? 
bringing hope to the hopeless. It's easy for us to look about the poverty around us, but among ourselves, including us as preachers, sometimes we get into that poverty spiritually. It is my hope and, uh, that God help us to stay in your word, to be fed on a daily basis. That's why I come to church Sunday after Sunday, to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, because I realize I am a sinner who is just saved by God's grace. That's why I'm here. Had it not been for God's grace in my life, maybe I'll be singing deep in the villages of Africa. But God has smiled on me. God has searched me and, and found me and say, here you are. I set you on this journey, on a mission to transform the world. Are you searching yourself? Blessed are those who are in poor in spirit, for the kingdom of God is theirs. Let us be fed on a daily basis in our spirits. I have come that those who are in captivity be freed. Isaiah was talking to the to, to children of Israel when they were in captivity in Babylon, when they were hopeless. And we thank God. Jesus is speaking the same words to us this morning. I have come that those who are in captivity may be released. Yes, we know there are people out there who are in prison, the physical prison, but also we can be in captivity in the spiritual realm where we are bound by the sin of this world, where we are bound by hatred, where we are bound by unforgiveness, where we are bound by so many things that are ungodly. We are in captivity. God is saying this morning, Jesus has come to release us so that we can be the great ambassador that God is calling us to go and breathe life into the hating world, to go and breathe life into those who are still in captivity of this world. My dear brothers and sisters, we cannot have the energy, the wisdom to go out there if we are still in captivity of sin ourselves. God is reminding us this morning to be free from that. God is reminding us this morning, it takes just you to sit and set your heart and say, God, I know I'm, I'm poor in spirit. Help me so that I know how to live like you want me to live, how to love like you want me to love, how to be like you want me to be, how to walk like Jesus. It is when we feel we are out of captivity of this world. Though this world can bound us in so many ways that will hurt our spirits, that will hurt our, our mission that God has before us. Are you bound? Jesus is saying, I'm here to release you from that bondage. What do you need to do to feel God's power so that you can go and breathe life in other people. Even just getting out of this canvas, there are so many out people out there who are hating, who do not know Jesus Christ. It takes you and me to say, here I am, God, send me, because I know you have freed me from the captivity of the sin of this world. That's why I'm here, to make a difference, to transform the world, to make disciples. I don't know why you are here, but I'm always here to say, feed me, God, so that I can go out there and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. There are those who have prayed for us when we were still somewhere. I don't think all of us started just being born and being in church. We have stories to tell of where God has lifted us from to be part of who we are today. Can you breathe life to somebody? Open my eyes, God, so that I can see. The scripture says, he came so that those who were blind can see. 
During Jesus' ministry, we have heard stories. Son of David, have mercy on me. I want to see. I want to have my sight, the physical sight. I was uh, saying to Kate this morning, I left my glasses in the office. She said, can I go get them? I said, I think I'm fine. I'll read from the iPad. I can see. The physical eyes may be open, but spiritual eyes are blind. So this morning, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm encouraging you to look at your spiritual eyes. Are they open to see what's in the world? Are they open to breathe life? Yes, we can have this too. We can see. But when the eyes of the heart are not seeing, we just pass by. I don't care. That's none of my business. Open the eyes of my heart, oh Lord, so I can see you clearly. Sometimes our eyes are open. I always uh, share this, uh, the story of Jesus when he was healing the blind man. When he had the first touch and he asked him, what do you see? And he said, I can see people, but they look like trees. Can you imagine if Jesus had left this man like that, where he is always seeing people like trees? We don't know. Maybe he would take a chainsaw and just be cutting because he's seeing people like trees. But when Jesus had the second touch, he could see, see clearly. I'm hoping and trusting that sometimes we have that first touch. We need Jesus to keep on touching our hearts, of, uh, our eyes of the hearts, so that we can see the world clearly. We can see people like Jesus see them. We can see the world the way God wants us to see the world. What eyes are you using, the physical or the spiritual? Open my eyes. Lord, from the heart. The heart is where we cook everything. In the heart, that's where everything good or bad starts. So God help us spiritually to have those eyes that can see the world in a different way. My dear brothers and sisters, when we have spiritual eyes, God's love is easy to share with the world. When we have spiritual eyes, our walk is different with the world. When we have spiritual eyes, our minds think clearly. There are times I'm thinking, I'm thinking clearly. But when somebody here, when I pour out what I'm thinking, like, are you crazy? Because what I'm pouring out does not even make sense because I'm not thinking clearly. God Open my eyes. What is causing you to be blind in God's sight? Set my heart, O oh Lord, so that I can see you clearly. Lastly, I'm not going to take you long. Let the oppressed be free. That the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. We cannot be out there as ambassadors of Jesus Christ to make the world be free if ourselves, we are bound. We are oppressed. I don't know about you, but I grew up in Africa during the colonial era. Life was not easy. My people were oppressed. I remember those moments where we, had, we didn't have to stay at the house. My mom always makes sure before sunset, everything is cooked, everything is packed, and we go up in the mountains. That was life because of the colonial era when the British occupied Zimbabwe, then Rhodesia. Zimbabwe came 1980 when we had independence. But I could see and feel the pain of being oppressed in your own country where you don't have the freedom to enjoy life, where you didn't have the freedom as young as kids to run around because there was war. And mom 
was the only one. Dad was working in town. So making sure life goes on regardless of what's out there. My dear brothers and sisters, we have those who are oppressed physically. And the world is crying and dying before us. We are the ambassadors who have been released and freed from the sin of this world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you willing to go and breathe in life to those who are oppressed? You know, sometimes we point at other people, but look and search close to you what's happening in your community, in your family, in our own country called the United States of America. Is everybody free? Are we spiritually free? You know, we thank God. I thank God that Christianity is here. You know, there are people who are dying because of lifting up the name of Jesus somewhere around the world. And we are so free to worship freely, however, whenever we can. But we miss the opportunity. Sometimes we are so comfortable. I don't feel like going to church today. I don't feel like doing this today. But me growing up, there was no option. Going to church was not an option. It was a must. I thank God that God has freed me to preach the good news to the poor freely, not even scared of anything, but to preach God's good news freely. We are freed by the power of the Holy Spirit to go and make a difference in the world. As United Methodist Church, we always say, we are, our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. The world is our parish. We ought to go with power, wisdom, and enthusiasm because we know we have been freed, and freed indeed to worship our living Savior. My dear brothers and sisters, it is a challenge. When God loved us so much and wanted us to be free from sin, he sent his only beloved son, Jesus Christ, to come to this world. I cannot imagine. I have two kids. God had one, but willing to send him to die for you and for me on the cross on that grueling day that we know what happened on Calvary. It wasn't pretty. But to leave the comfort of heaven, to come down for you and for me. What kind of love is that? We cannot even put a dollar sign on it because God has smiled on you and me. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, I challenge you to go and give life to the lifeless world and give life and hope to the hopeless communities around us, even in our own families. I don't know about you, but I know I have family members who need to be breathed in life and hope. It takes you and me to go. And sometimes it's not easy because not everybody is saying, yes, I receive it. But we are challenged this morning and reminded. I thank God for the work of the United Methodist women, women in faith. Continue to do the work so that those who are in prison will be freed spiritually and physically. Those who are in captivity may be released. Those who have no sight spiritually and physically will receive sight. Are you willing to be God's ambassador? Are you willing to do the work of the Lord? God is calling for you and for me. That I have come that we may have life and have it abundantly. Not abundantly in material things, but spiritually. You are the ambassador. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for your reminder, reminding us in this moment.
to be the ambassadors, to go into the world and give life through the work that you have called us. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came from heaven to earth so that we may have life and have it abundantly. And it is our hope that in this manner, we will go in the world to preach the good news of Jesus Christ, to release the captivities, to let those who are blind see, and also those who are oppressed to be free. God, we thank you. We honor you. We give you all the glory. Guide and lead us as we go into the world to do your work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. we go forward in knowing God and sharing God with the world, be reminded that you are the good news carrier to bring those who have no sight sight, to release those who are bound bound. My dear brothers and sisters, go in peace and be on the mission with God. Amen.